I believe in free trade, and that's a, that's a good thing for America. It's a good for our national security. I want to add more free trade agreements. I am a free trade. Free trade agreement. Free trade. Free trade. Free trade. I'm a free trade. Free trade. Free trade. Free trade. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? In fact, I bet most of you watching right now might even think that free trade has been around for as long as America has. But free trade, as good as it sounds, is one of the greatest con jobs ever perpetrated on the American people. And if we don't do something to change our current trade policies in America, you can count on more of the same. More high unemployment, more lower wage jobs, more factories closing down, while the middle class struggles to hold on to whatever they have left. If you want to know what free trade has done for America, well, you're looking at it. But if you look back at the 239-year history of our country, you will find that what we call free trade today has really only been around for about 35 years. Prior to that, from 1791 until right around 1980, our country operated under a system known as fair trade. Fair trade protected American jobs by requiring an import tariff to be paid on all foreign goods coming into this country. For almost 200 years, if you wanted the privilege of importing foreign goods into America, this is what it cost. And keep in mind, under these fair trade policies, America created the largest middle class in history. We led the world in wages and manufacturing. U.S. companies and factories were some of the largest and most productive in the world, and all of this existed under fair trade. But apparently, that wasn't good enough. Welcome to the world of free trade. They told us the Industrial Revolution was over and that manufacturing no longer mattered. Service, information, and technology jobs were going to lead America into the 21st century. All we had to do was get government out of the way and let the invisible hands of the free market somehow rule over our economy. You remember this guy. Government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. So what is free trade? Well, according to this new world order that's being created, free trade is supposed to turn our world into this magical new global economy in which trade barriers no longer exist. Everyone will now be able to compete on a level playing field which will bring wealth and prosperity to all the nations of the world. That's what they promised anyway. So let's take a look at how free trade really works. We buy a lot of cars in America. In 2013, we imported around 2 million from both Canada and Japan, nearly a million and a half from Mexico, and well over half a million from both Korea and Germany. All totaled, we imported more than 7 million cars in 2013. So let's say you want to buy a car for around $35,000. You have lots of models to choose from at competitive prices. This is because under free trade, it only costs about $1,000 in duties and tariffs to import any one of these foreign cars into America. But let's say you were in Germany looking for that same car. You would still have all the same models to choose from, but this time the American cars would cost $11,000 more than the German cars. Why? Because under free trade, Germany and everyone else in the world we trade with are allowed to charge what is called a value-added tax, or a VAT tax of around 20%. America, on the other hand, has allowed unrestricted access to our markets by reducing tariffs to almost nothing. Even though a VAT tax and a tariff are functionally the exact same thing, one is allowed under free trade and one is not. The net result is that foreign automakers are able to sell millions of more cars to America than we are able to sell in their countries. And this applies to all trade, not just automobiles. Take a look at what has happened to our trade balance since 1950. Under fair trade, we had trade surpluses with the rest of the world. But since we began implementing free trade, those trade surpluses have turned into enormous trade deficits totaling more than nine and a half trillion dollars. Now under fair trade, most of that money would have stayed right here in America. It would have gone into the pockets of workers and the middle class in the form of high wages, health care, and good pensions. People put that money to work. They used it to buy goods and services which were made in America. 
It created the need for thousands of small businesses like restaurants and dry cleaners, movie theaters and auto repair shops. These small businesses went on to create millions of new jobs. And the tax dollars generated from these businesses and workers paid for the construction and maintenance of our infrastructure. It paid for the education of our children and the building of our schools. It created programs like Social Security and Medicare as a safety net for the most vulnerable among us. It provided government services and oversight which are necessary to operate and maintain a strong and vibrant economy. This is what made the middle class, and this is what turned America into the largest economy in the world. But that's not what we did. Instead of investing that money here in America, our leaders instituted new tax and trade policies, policies which took that money out of our economy and put it into the economies of countries like India and China. They forced us to compete with countries that have no environmental laws, countries with no labor or worker safety laws, and countries where workers are paid as little as a dollar a day. They made it possible for foreign companies to take the natural resources of our country, things like our nation's forests. They cut them down, stuff them into containers, and then ship them overseas, where low-wage workers turn them into finished goods and then sell them back to us. And the tax dollars, which once paid for the infrastructure and all the social programs and government services we once counted on, all that money now flows into the pockets of giant multinational corporations and the billionaires who control them. Want to see where your money goes? Well, here's a picture of Shanghai, China, before free trade. And here's what it looks like today. In just 30 years, free trade has allowed China to build the most modern cities and the most modern infrastructure in the world. And we paid for it. And the sad thing is that this used to be America back when our trade policies protected our manufacturing jobs. But today, America is in decline. The effects of free trade can be felt everywhere. More than 60,000 factories in the United States have closed their doors. Millions of our good-paying jobs have been outsourced by these American corporations. Poverty and homelessness are at record levels. Our infrastructure is crumbling because of our insane tax and trade policies. Our national debt has exploded under free trade. Today, it stands at almost $18 trillion. Manufacturing once made up almost a third of our economy, but today it has fallen to around 10%. Take a look at what has happened to wages in this country. From 1947 until 1980, as worker productivity grew, so did the wages of American workers. Both businesses and workers shared in our prosperity. But as free trade began to take hold, our productivity still continued to rise, but the real wages of the American worker went nowhere. Today, workers make little more than they did back in 1980. Now everything else went up. The cost of food, energy, housing, education, and health care, they all went up, leaving workers left to wonder how they were going to survive in this new global economy. This is what 35 years of free trade has done to this country. This is the real cost of low prices. So who are the winners? Who really benefits from free trade? Corporations, for one. The profits of corporations have soared under free trade. Their CEOs make millions of dollars for sending our jobs overseas. But free trade has been especially beneficial for the super-rich. Their numbers... Their wealth and power have increased so dramatically over the last 35 years that they now pose a very real and present danger to the future of our democracy. Together, they control well over half of all the wealth in America. Their money corrupts our government and our elections. It controls our access to news and information. And it has drowned out the voices of millions of Americans. So the next time you hear one of these corporate shills preaching to you about the virtues of free trade, about the promise of good-paying jobs and prosperity for the American people. Remember who it is they answer to and who really benefits from these kind of free trade deals. Ross Perot had it right when he tried to warn us about NAFTA and free trade back in 1992. We have got to stop sending jobs overseas. Pretty simple. 
if you're paying twelve, thirteen dollars, fourteen dollars an hour for factory workers, and you can move your factory south of the border, pay a dollar an hour for your labor, have no health care, that's the most expensive single element making a car, have no environmental controls, no pollution controls, and no retirement, and you don't care about anything but making money, there will be a giant sucking sound going south. What I oppose and what I will always oppose are trade deals that put the interests of Wall Street ahead of the interests of American workers. We can't keep passing unfair trade deals like NAFTA that put special interests over workers' interests. And it is absolutely true that NAFTA was a mistake. Look, I've been somebody who opposed CAFTA, who you know, has said I'd help to renegotiate NAFTA. Uh, I would immediately uh, call uh, the president of Mexico, the president of Canada, to try to amend NAFTA. To make sure that the labor and environmental agreements are actually enforceable. Our trade agreements should not just be good for Wall Street, it should also be good for Main Street. And the problem that we've had is, is that we've had corporate lobbyists oftentimes involved in negotiating these trade agreements, but the AFL-CIO hasn't been involved, ordinary working people have not been involved, and we've got to make sure that our agreements are good for everybody, because globalization right now is creating uh, winners and losers, but the problem is it's the same winners and the same losers each and every time. What happened to this guy, Mr. President? Not only has nothing been done to fix NAFTA, now you're trying to pass an even more extreme version of free trade, one which will send millions more of our jobs overseas. It is called the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, or the TPP for short. Under the TPP, foreign corporations will be able to overturn laws that protect our land and our air and our water. Want to pass a law against fracking? Not under the TPP. Want to preserve net neutrality? Want to know what's in the food you eat? Under the TPP, special trade courts will now make those decisions. These courts will operate outside of our legal system. They will have the authority to rewrite or nullify laws, which were passed by we the people. The proceedings will be held behind closed doors, their decisions are final, and there is no chance to appeal. Passing the TPP will do more damage to our country than all previous trade agreements combined. Mr. President, you recently made an offer to the American people regarding the TPP. I am happy to debate this, and I'm sure Jerry and others are, based on the actual facts. Well, Mr. President, we would like to accept your offer to debate the TPP. A real debate on our country's trade policy will give the American people the opportunity to make an informed choice. Free trade, after all, is a choice. So bring your best advisors and economists, Mr. President. If you believe there is no other alternative to free trade, then stand before the American people and make your case. We have our own people who will offer an alternative. We believe free trade is the problem, not the solution. We believe America must return to a system based on fair trade, a system which existed in this country for almost 200 years before it was blown up by people who care more about profit than our democracy. We must make our trade policy the key issue in 2016. In order to do that, we need to start with a nationally televised debate on free trade so that everyone understands what is at stake. And we need your help to make that happen. We have created a petition on the White House website demanding a primetime debate with the president. Come to our website and follow the link. Sign the petition. While you're there, find out what more you can do to help. Democracy doesn't just happen. It requires all of us to get involved and make our voices heard. If you want your jobs back, you have to take them back. Put your democracy to work for you. That's what it's there for. The president just negotiated the largest trade agreement in the history of the world. It will affect every aspect of our lives. The question is, what are you going to do about it? You can start by holding our leaders accountable. Come sign our petition and make your voices heard. Demand the debate and bring our jobs home.